Um, so welcome everyone. Thank you for logging on uh, to this evening's program. My name is Matt Schumann. I'm on the programming team here at Cary Library. Before we begin, just a few things to note. Please let me know in the chat if there are any technical issues that I can try to resolve. If you have any questions, send them via the chat and we will address them at the end. Uh, this program is made possible by the generous donors to the Cary Library Foundation and the Lexington Field and Garden Club. I'd like to now introduce Ashley Rooney, the past president of the Lexington Field and Garden Club. Ashley has been the host of our gardening series for two years now. And uh, I've been saying that for all my programs this week. This is just like dawning on me. Wow. But, um, and she has brought uh, innumerable experts uh, to the library and to answer all of our gardening questions and our curiosities. So now please welcome Ashley. Good evening, everybody. It's lovely to have you here on a nice cold night. Tonight, we're having Christina Gamota. And I remember I was doing a book on table decor and Christina would call me up. And she said, I have a lovely table for you. Come, come, take pictures. And she always had these beautiful things and she arranged it so gorgeously and it was just lovely. And with Christina, you know, she does things with such panache. And tonight she's gonna to share some of her ornaments and how she uses these things um, with us on Valentine's Day. And then we're going to talk about potpourri for those of you who wanna know a little bit, get the gardening in it. But Valentine's Day, gardeners love people. So Valentine's Day is very appropriate for all this. So Christina, take it away. Thank you, Ashley, for inviting me one more time. Good evening. <laughs> Today's program is, as Ashley has um, mentioned, on Valentine, collections, poopery, and more. All of these are ingredients that were given to me as gifts bought or created by me. I had a wonderful time preparing for today's program, and I hope you will enjoy this. It brought so many beautiful memories of 50 plus years. What you will see comes from my extensive collection of hearts, cherubs, and crafts, and how they're being used. As you know, crab, hearts come in many different shapes and sizes. They can be worn as a piece of jewelry, used as a decorative item, consumed as candy, cake, chocolate and much more. You do not need to run into a store and buy many of these ingredients. Many of these ingredients you will find inside your home or outside. You can use recycle all textiles, beads, buttons, paper of any kind, paint, wood or dry plant material, etc. I hope you all have fun creating your own potpourri of items or crafts. What you will see will be images from my collection and I will share with you the information. It will be easy to make many of these crafts and I hope you will have fun as I did. I will start with a brief history of who St. Valentine was and the definition of the French word potpourri and more and questions will be answered at the end of this presentation. Here is the image of our Saint Valentine. Many early Christian martyrs were named Valentine. The Valentine that we honor on February 14th is the one we have the most information on. He was a priest of Rome who was martyred in 269 AD and pronounced a saint in 496 AD, 200 years later. A second Valentine was Bishop of Indorama, today is known as Turni in, in the central of Italy. And he was martyred four years later in 273 AD and we do not have any other information on this Valentine. The third Valentine was martyred in Africa, far away in a different continent 
with a number of companions, but nothing more is known about him. And he also has been declared a saint and is under the date of February 14th. So let me share about the Valentine of Rome. He seems to be the one that has the most information. He was persecuted as a Christian and in prison. And while he was in prison, a day before his execution, he performed a miracle by healing the daughter of his jailer named Julia. And legend tells us that in the 18th century, it was repeated that on the evening before Valentine was to be executed, he has written the first Valentine card himself, and it was addressed to Julia, who no longer was blind. And he signed this card, your Valentine. Hmm. Another legend tells us that Julia herself planted a pink blossom almond tree near his grave. The tree remains a symbol of abiding love and friendship. St. Valentine also performed Christian weddings for soldiers who were forbidden to marry. The Roman emperor, Claudius II, forbid this in order to grow his army because he believed that married men did not make good soldiers. To remind men of their vows, St. Valentine is said to have cut hearts from parchment, giving them to soldiers and persecuted Christians. St. Valentine wore a purple amethyst ring with an image of Cupid engraved in it. Amethyst has become the birthstone of the month of February, which is to attract love. Many <laughs> centuries later, Pope Gregory XVI presented the St. Valentine's remains to Friar Sprott, an Irish Carmelite friar and founder of the Carmelite Church in Dublin. There, the saint's relics were installed and the shrine of St. Valentine was dedicated on November 10th, 1836. The custom of sending cards, flowers, chocolate and other gifts originated in the UK. And that is what we do here in the United States as well. I received my first Valentine card when I came to this country and I was only 17 years old. And the person that gave me this card was my Spanish teacher. So let's see what images I will be sharing with you. This image represents the symbols of love, which I have described. The chair, which was engraved in Valentine's ring, the heart, the parchment hearts that he gave to the married men, the soldiers, as a reminder, and those that were Christians that were persecuted, and the dove was the messenger. No. Oh. You see an except an example of a few of my Valentines, paper Valentines. Some are vintage and some are antique. And they are being treasured. They were given to me by a member of Morning Study who collected them. Mm -hmm. And I really treasure them because, again, wonderful memories. On the right side is something that I created for you by purchasing uh, at one of the hobby stores a balsa wood unpainted dove, a symbol, uh, uh, and it represents that messenger and painted white. You can paint it any other color. And then I introduce a purple ribbon so you can hang it. Then one of my pieces of jewelry uh, has a purple ribbon instead of a gold chain. And I show it on almost antique scarf that my father used to wear when he would go to a dance. Mm. It's lovely is an example of contemporary cards, which are made out of, by using different kinds of paper. You have a plain paper in the back, then you have a wallpaper uh, cut out, a hard cut out with an opening so you can place your um, 
flower, in this case is a rosebud, which is completely made out of paper. And in the back, I have a heart decal of two lovely angels. And if you are not interested in doing something like that, which is a little bit more complicated, then you can just use a simple piece of white paper and a nice elongated heart um, gold. I like to save my um, bonbon uh, silver or gold paper. And uh, to complete this vignette, I have used a gold bird, uh, which I use all year round to create different vignettes. Here is another example of um, contemporary Valentine card. It has three different kinds of papers. It has a floral paper as a background, and then it has two pieces of handmade paper, the white one and the red one. And the hand is made out of metal, and so is the heart. Loving mm -hmm. hand, I call this Valentine card. If you are not interested in those examples, you can trace your hand or you can trace your glove and use just simple medium weight uh, white paper and the message will be written on the inside. And again, you can display it in so many different ways. Here's another example. You still see that scarf, that satin scarf with an introduction of a little um, heart shaped box from my collection and a little piece of jewelry. And I call this loving hands, gentle and loving. If you don't have a box, but you have a piece of jewelry, that will be the look that you can create. And here is a close up, very simple and easy to make. If you like boxes like I do to store things or display things, here is a very simple way of doing it. A very simple and plain, heavy paper box, some of them are made out of recycled paper, just use props to display it. In this case, I'm using three different layers. I have a piece of stone and then I have a block of wood underneath and then I place my circle, my mirror circle. You can create your own card like I have created here or a collage by multiplying, you use many, you use two different um, views and then you combine them together and this is what you can get. Here is that simple box. Mm -hmm. You can place the, purchase this in many of the hobby stores. Here is a recycled paper box created by an artist. I purchased this in London as I was visiting one of our sons. And um, it has beautiful watercolor uh, paintings. The cover it represents Adam and Eve and a cherub in the back. And in order to display, I always feel that it has to be elevated, brought up higher so you can appreciate more. This is the inside. The image on the right side shows the inside, the lid, the inside of the lid which has a lovely uh, wreath. And then the bottom of the inside of the heart-shaped box has a tree and a cherub with a bow and arrow. Also, the side of the box is decorated and it's a watercolor. The name of the designer is Catriona Stewart. Here is a box that you can create, a simple box. You can decoupage this, black paper and decoupage. <coughs> of a chair and some little golden stars. And this is a small box. Here you can use again decoupage and cover the outside of your heart-shaped box as well as the inside. And you can see the inside on the image on the right. Another decoupage oh. brown box with cherubs. I have three different sizes. I have a large one, medium and small. And to complement this display, I use a ceramic chair box. Mm. Here you see a close up. The lovely chair with his bow and arrow, floating hearts and a background of roses. A vignette created by using 
two boxes that have been decoupaged, one in a plain paper, purple. The other one has a print with tiny little hearts of different colors. And of course, the hot lips of Marilyn Monroe, which were so popular <laughs> in the 1960s. And I love that pop art look of, um, that we had in the early 1960s. I call this the lips. Okay. Here we have a close up of those small decoupage boxes. What do you do with a box, a plain candy box that is not attractive? Very easy. You can trace a heart on felt. You do not need to glue this. Uh, what I have used in this case is gold. And then use a wooden toothpick to do that. And then I have a collection of labels, of metal labels, in this case is brass, which you can engrave or you can use them without the engraving. And underneath that label, I use a simple Grogren red ribbon. Very easy. You just recycle your box. Yeah. Here is a small candy box which is covered in satin, and it has lots of tiny little gold hearts. You can store your earrings in it. It's perfect for that once you are done with your candy. <laughs> Another simple box, but in this case, this one is covered in velvet. I created a bow, a simple bow, and if that is not enough for you, you can add something else, like the beaded heart. Another recycle. Hearts come in different shapes and sizes. This heart is an elongated heart. It's a paper made out of recycled paper and is covered in velvet. And it has this lovely gold design. You can use it in a simple way by displaying it on a Pashima scarf, or you can embellish it by using a beaded small heart as the image on the right side shows. Going back to that simple velvet chocolate box that I recycled, the next year you can add another feature. You can add your heart pendant with the chain and you can see how it changes. Another shape, a contemporary shape, bonbon box, recycle paper with a heart pendant. And it's display on an old, velvet pillowcase that has interesting details, which I thought complemented the details on the cover of your bonbon box. A very simple box that I used to put little treasures inside. I decided to embellish it by looking for a ribbon that I had, some left over. It's a wire ribbon, so it's very nice to create all kind of um, bends to it and it has little um two different sizes or three different sizes of gold hearts and then a cherub displayed on that same pillow case this is a very easy one of my favorite um crafts that i have done with three-year-olds and four-year-olds and i want to show you how it changes by depending on what kind of a background color you use. So this little box requires two different colors, but by changing the background color, you see what happens. This is a red background construction paper, the same kind of paper that I used to weave the box. And this is a handmade paper in white. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. So let's look what else we have. Here I have a pattern to show you. What it requires is a sheet of paper. You fold the sheet and you cut three strips, two of the same width and one narrow. The same width is worth 
the part that you're going to be weaving, the narrow strip is, becomes a handle. And here is a close up. So straight piece with the round tips, knots are, do not go all the way to the end. They have to stop where the straight line stops. So you will be able to weave. If that's too much for you, then you can just cut simple hearts out of construction paper and you can do them in one color or you can do them in two colors or three colors. You can introduce that purple color that you learn that it represents the stone of the month of February and it also represents the color of the stone that was worn by these special saints. If you don't like the paper, you can buy some unfinished wooden hearts and they come in all different depth. The one on the right is a balsa piece of wood that I sprayed red on both sides. And if you want to embellish that, you can use a pin, uh, a chair pin. And in this case, this is a special one because it has a plastic tube in the back that allows you to put a little bit of water and a fresh flower. Mm. The heart on the left side, it's much wider. It's about an inch uh, in depth. And I painted that gold. And then the front and the back have been painted red. And I used another metal label, which is not engraved. And again, you know, you can do all kinds of things. Both of the hearts, have openings where you can put a ribbon and hang them if you decide to do that on a tree or on a wall. Uh, these hearts can be used also Christmas time. Here are the very simple boxes that I was uh, showing you that have been decorated. The one on the left side is paper and the one on the right is a balsa wood. Very inexpensive and very easy to find. Now, what can you do with the oh. boxes? You can spray them silver or gold. In my case, I spray them silver outside and inside. And then you can use those wonderful natural stencils that you had collected from your backyard or from your walk. And mm -hmm. they will be memories to you too. And so you see the outside and you see the inside of the lid and the inside of the box. Here is an, another example. And I usually buy these boxes in different sizes because I like to collect them and then display them either singly or together. So here again, you see those natural stencils. You don't have to spend money. You can find them outside your door. If you are not pleased with that, then you can paint them and invest a little bit more time. In this case, it is um, the color that I was attracted to. The inside of the lid is pink. The outside, the outside has a design. The inside of the box is painted purple. And here is another idea for you. And again, they come in different sizes and they're very inexpensive. Now, this is a little fancier. For your special pearl earrings, you can collect these lovely boxes. They are silk. And this one also has this wonderful bead design on top. Here is a close up. These beads can be glued with a very fine brush or a toothpick, depending upon the size. Elmer's glue does a wonderful job. I will not use um, a hot glue gun. And what you can place is if you have a golden paper doily, uh, that will be underneath those beads. Here is another idea, um, a very simple, elegant, quite satin uh, box with beads on top has been embellished with a piece of jewelry. And the other image on the right side shows you how beautiful the inside is for your special jewelry. If you don't have a cherub, but you have a keyhole pendant, 
why not? Silver looks also good and you can think of the memories of when someone opened your heart with a special key. Here is the close up of that versatile small is only about two and a half inches in diameter. Now this is a little bit more exotic. I fell in love with this box because it's so beautiful uh, and so functional. It is made out of a square that came from a crazy quilt. They have used gold thread to do the embroidery. It has some sequins and I like to use it all year round and I embellish it with all kinds of different accessories. It is displayed again on a Pashima uh, magenta, very bright color. Here is a close up. You see how beautiful that embroidery is? And then you have the velvet squares that have been sewed together to create a patch. If you have a collection of hearts, like I do, the beaded hearts, why not create cascading hearts? And these cascading hearts come down from a stand that I have, a small stand that I exhibit some of my jewelry, and it's wrapped in a handmade scarf that uses colors. Um, to complement the red beaded hearts. And the colors are different shades of lilac and different shades of pink. Here is a close up of that beaded heart. And again, the symbols of love, the simple dove that you can paint or leave it maybe unpainted, the pendant that you have, and the little special box in the shape of a heart. And here is again a close up of that dove. Another little ceramic box. You saw one, and here's the second one, the companion. A close up of the reclining cherub. This is a fun piece. It is a ceramic sculpture, which has been with us for almost 60 years. It was bought when we were graduate students at University of Michigan and is uh, made by Nancy Nichols. And what's fun about this is that it is so real that you can watch your guests when you have your guests over coming to it. And trying to get a bonbon and they realize that it's a very good pretend. Here is another close up. Another type of a heart. This is a heart that sends messages, messages that come from the heart. And it is something that an artist has designed for a very good cause that I will share with you. Her name is Sandra McSummon. And she says, this heart says, love each other with all your heart. And this is the message that comes from the heart. Celebrate the daily pleasures and heartfelt beliefs by recognizing and thanking the people who fill our days with joy purpose and meaning. The artist Sandra combines images and verse to convey simple truth when the right words cannot be found. She believes that a gift given from the heart touches the heart. The heart beat love each other. She developed this in 2001 for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And my mother had breast cancer. So this was a very special way of honoring my mother as well. Here is another heart. It's a sculpture, it's acrylic. It's a beaten heart because the battery allows you to hear the sound of the heart. 
both of us, George and I purchased this many years ago, probably close to 50 at MoMA when we lived in New Jersey. Here is another a beating heart, but it's a pin. And I created a little vignette by using one of my favorite cherubs. And the acrylic beaten heart pin was placed on a wooden block. And I will show you now how you, this is a see-through. So unlike the other one, you couldn't see the battery. In this case, you see. And as you pin this onto your heart, you think you have actually two hearts because it's so perfectly beating. What do you do with the bottom of a simple paper recycle heart? You can line it with tissue paper. In this case, I have lined it with two tissue layers of paper, red, which I always have surplus after Christmas. And then I have displayed four hearts, three are red and one is white. And here is a close up of that beautiful shape heart. What else can you do? You can collect porcelain heart shaped plates, display things in them or give them as gifts. Each one also has a special message. This one, for example, says for a special friend. These can be used all year round. Another little box from my collection, this is tiny. I call it Sweethearts. It's a painted box. And because it is small, I like to place it on something else. And in this case is a black locker Japanese box, which sits on an acrylic um, platform. If that's not enough of elevating this tiny little box, you can place your black box on top of another box. In this case, this round box has been decoupaged with wallpaper and it sits on a red block, wooden block. Here is a close up of the sweethearts. If you are in Paris and you love chocolate like I do, it's a must to stop at Fouchon. And the box is so beautiful that I can't throw it away. I bring it home. I display it either simply on that red wooden block or I can place a cherub, a piece of jewelry on it. If you do not want to have a cherub, you can find another partner and in this case is that little white beaded satin hard box. Maxim is another place that you can stop and purchase candy. This golden heart came home also and is displayed on a silk scarf. The fringes are golden sequins. A very practical gift True love, if you open this, you find that there's a scented candle inside. That's a close up. The candle is made out of soy, as you can see. A metal stainless steel sculpture purchased a long time ago in 1972, also in MoMA. It's made out of two pieces, so it's very easy to store when you're not using it. And it was designed by Merle Steer. It has been with us for a long time and is displayed uh, many different ways. Here is a close up. What else can you do? If you have some color wire, <coughs> metal, you can create a garland by using and connecting, making your heart shape and then connecting this with another heart and another heart and it can go on forever. You can use it alone uh, on a black surface or a white surface, but I like to combine it with other things. And in this case, these twigs came from my backyard. They have been tied up in 
with raffia, and you can see that actually there are two bunches of them. And then I introduced two sculptures of metal apples with two different textures. And they are sitting in a platter, a very mid-century platter, which sits on a marble piece, which sits on a granite piece. So you can build these layers. And here is a close-up of that very simple and very easy construct heart garland. If you have other boxes um, like I have, this one is quite old and um, I use it in many different ways. And again, I like to create little platforms to create some interest. And then I combine this with other things. Here is the box um, on sitting on a mirror stand. If you have a frame, like a mirror frame, which is what I have, there are so many things that you can do with metal things. For Valentine, you can bring those metal hearts and use a red background or a purple background. If you don't have that, you can create a metal wire heart and then use an old fashioned ring and to attach it. And I call this entrance to the heart, a special key. Another way that you can use this heart is by combining it with a crystal heart and using also dry plant material. In this case is status. And you can see which one you like better. Uh, do you like the crystal with a status and the silver metal heart underneath? Or do you like the metal heart with a status on top and the crystal underneath? Many different combinations. And here is a close up of these two hearts. These are very light tin metal hearts. I call them festive hearts. They can be used all year round just by changing the ribbon. Tiny little hard pins. I created a positive and negative feeling by using one on a black lacquer box, which you have seen before, and the other one on a cylinder, a three inch high cylinder. The pendant that you saw can be displayed on a black lacquer box. And here are three copper metal mini cookie cutters designed by Martha Stewart. I purchased this a long time ago. They are functional and they produce wonderful cookies. Here is a close up of the functional heart. If you feel that you would like to treat your spouse or one of your lovely friends, you can create a tea by using the collection of the sterling hearts and accessories that you have accumulated through your years. I have these hearts, two large ones, and then I have six small ones. And of course, there is a beautiful cherub candy spoon and the perfume container in a heart shape. And here is a close up of these items. A very simple vintage basket that I bought many, many years ago can be beautified by accessorizing it. You can place it again on a platform of interest and you can use something on the top or you can use for Valentine just the red block of wood um, and nothing on top. An open heart basket. This is used more than just once a year. It's beautifully made. Um, it has pine cones all around. And then you also see how beautifully the base is made. Here is a close up. A big 
heart. This big heart is very special because it was given to me as I was leaving my teaching position in Virginia. And it was made by one of the preschool teachers. It's made on a chicken wire form. Here is a close up. Another open hard basket. It's red, and I like to line it with a silk golden scarf. And there I place all my little beaded hearts. And this time you can see it with a cherub. And here you don't see the cherub, you see the wonderful cover of that old pillow that I had. And eventually the pillow disappeared and the cover remained. Here's another type of a heart. And this also plays a role. They are called healing hearts. And a healing hearts are designed to bring emotional comfort and healing to people. The weight of the heart when you place it on the chest is so comforting, like the hand a loved one will place on the heart to soothe. Many of them have rose quartz, which are known to possess gentle healing properties when they're associated with the heart. Use your heart while you meditate or you are reading. Healing hearts are blessed with intention of healing and should be given to yourself or others with love. And here's an image of another healing heart that I have. It's a little smaller and it also has been embellished with a ribbon in one of the chirps from my collection. You can also uh, fill that with lavender. Here is a soft sculpture, quite old, probably over 50 years old, uh, which in which I have used linen for the embroidery, felt for the back, and very simple stitches. Yarn is what I have used, tapestry yarn from my needlepoint projects. It has a loop in the back so you can hang this and I call it fleeting heart. Another heart uh, made out of felt, and this has applique. So all the pieces that you see, the leaves and the petals and the centers are made out of felt and then attached with simple stitching. And also there are beads. I call this garden of flowers. Lovebirds. Two elongated hearts made out of felt and applique felt pieces with very simple stitches. This one has blanket stitch and straight stitches. No glue has been used in either one of those hearts that I have showed you. Many country pins, tiny, they're about an inch and a half. They are used to um, dress up my collection of teddy bears. And sometimes they have display like this. This is an old um, stool. What do you do with buttons? Buttons, so many of us have inherited a uh, garment from our parents or grandparents and we don't know what to do. Well, you can take the buttons off. You can take a piece of fabric uh, draw a shape of a heart, whatever shape you would like, and then look at those buttons and start filling that shape. You can also take a piece of fabric, draw love, the word love on it, and then embroider that with a running stitch and attach that um, and place it on top of that button creation. Here is a photo album cover. This one is covered in silk. You can do the same thing. You can trace a heart and the buttons that come from your blouse or your husband's shirt can be recycled. And this is what you can create. Buttons, 
and buttons. And what else can you do? You can create your button bouquet. In this case, I have used red buttons and some flowers are have four layers of different buttons. Other have six and some have four and some have two. And you see that close up. Another cover of an album uses crazy quilt hearts that have been attached by sewing them or not gluing them. If you have felt, large pieces of felt, you can create your Valentine bag, you can embellish it, or you, it could be simple. Simple as you can see on the right side and embellish on the left side by having two layers of different colors of felt. And then again, you can place your pendant, you can place a ribbon and you can bring a little bit of that purple color in. Here is a close up of that Valentine bag. And when you want to use the Valentine bag some other time, you can remove some of these embellishments. Who does not like a teddy bear? This teddy bear is made out of felt, it's little. It has a red felt heart and it could be attached almost to anything. In this case, it has been photographed on a square of silk fabric. Heart also can be carved out of stone. In this case, it's an alabaster. And again, to create interest, I have different layers of textures. Hearts can be painted. This is a stone polka dot heart that comes from Africa. If you love to go and walk on the beach, you can start your collection of different sizes and different shapes of hearts, just like this artist has done. Now we move to poopery. What is poopery? Poopery is a mixture of dried, naturally fragrant plant materials used to provide a gentle, natural scent. Often we place this mixture in a decorative bowl. The word potpourri comes into English from the French word potpourri. The French word or term has two connotations. It is the French name for Spanish stew with a wide variety of ingredients called olla podrida a specialty of the city of Burgos. The word was taken and copied by the French military during the Napoleonic occupation of Burgos, five years war, a long war from 1808 to 1813. The word pas in French has the same meaning as it does in English and as olla does in Spanish. The word pourri means rotten. Now the Webster Dictionary has a second definition for potpourri. A miscellaneous collection and 49 different synonyms. And I have some of these in this program. Look at the list. I have used collage, crazy quilt, patchwork, and I might be using menagerie, another French word. Jambalaya, many of you are familiar with that word. Montage, olla podrida, and smorgasbord. Now here is an image of some of my dry ingredients for dry potpourri that I have air dried. Southern wood on the left, rosebuds in the center, lavender, on the right, balsam pine needles, do not. If you have a, a balsam uh, Christmas tree, do recycle those uh, pine needles. They're extremely fragrant. Cedar chips, 
patchouli and oak moss. We use um, fragrances to enhance some of the fragrances of the dry plant material, and they could be cloves, they could be cinnamon sticks, and also to um, have this combination last for a long time. Some people like to use a fixatin like orris root. If those fragrances that I have suggested are not enough, uh, or you were like others, there are many fragrant oils that you can purchase and it doesn't require a lot, it's just a drop or two and use your eyedropper for that. And how can you use your combination of dry ingredients? For example, you can create sachets. In this case, I have recycled again, a little cocktail napkin and a doily, and I have created a sachet in a way that you can insert that liner from the back without having uh, too much problem. These have lavender. I have not used any other mixture except uh, once a year, I might add uh, a drop of oil. Here is a close up. Here is another way that you can recycle those old textiles, as I had mentioned, by using a patch from your crazy quilt. There are two different uh, quilts. The front uh, of this wonderful heart, which I call my love, because there is an inscription embroidered in front, and then you see the back. There is a way that you can hang this by introducing a longer ribbon. This is another example of a heart where French fabric has been used, a pattern French fabric, a simple linen and a simple linen lace and a special key is attached. I call this a key to my heart and it has lavender. Another sachet, a crazy quilt square that has been turned into an elongated uh, heart. The embroidery is done in um, tapestry, wool and it has also lavender. Pamper yourself or your friend by making shoe sachets. The image to the left is vintage and is done in velvet. It has bought some pine needles which lasts for a long time. And the one on the right is satin, it has lavender and there is a little lavender stem. Here you see a close-up, a display on a lovely scarf that complements. Here is another example of shoe sachets done in a very simple satin fabric and then embellished with a ribbon, a green ribbon. A fancier pair of shoe sachets they are connected, so you will not misplace one. And the fabric is beautiful. It has stripes and it has coral designs and tiny hearts. Lavender also is inside. And my last example is hearts, which are made out of felt. Uh, two simple stitches, the blanket stitch and the running stitch, and it has balsam pine and is very dense. This is an example of forms that you can create by using either styrofoam blocks or others. And so I will show you the hearts that were created by making styrofoam forms. You have many different choices as far as how big the heart you would like to have, how small and how deep the heart should be. And the serrated knife is the tool. This is an open heart, uh, which you can purchase. And this is a wire heart that you can construct. This is a heart that was made by using 
the deeper styrofoam and using dry plant materials. This was a workshop that I did many years ago, raffia, uh, dry uh, paper whites and metal heart and a little bit of uh, sphagnum moss in the back. A loop was created by using raffia. Here is another example of um, a heart that was created by using that form that you created. I did not use glue. I used a fisherman's um, filament to attach it. And then I used the dry plant material that I had collected in the fall. Here is a close up and you can see the filaments. Here is another example. In this case, the ornamentation is not only in front, but in the back. Uh, rose petals and pansies have been used. Pansy has been used to attach the ribbon, which has been attached to the styrofoam. Hearts that you can create by using wires, um, elongated, round ones, etc. This, of course, will be perfect for material that will be light. If you're going to use heavy material, then you need to have something of this kind. And I purchased this form. This is the example of the light wire form and the dry plant material that I have used. This is also that light wire form. And in this case, the material is not dry plant, but it's paper. Paper has been used for the flowers, for the leaves, for the heart. And there is a saying on the arrow, token of love. This is an example where you will have to use a heavy metal wire and you will cover it also with um, a florist uh, tape or some other material. You can even use strips of fabric. Here is a close up and you definitely have to use a hot glue gun, uh, the one that produces a high heat. A collage, a collage of pop art, hearts that you have seen, paper, wire, and stone. A crazy quilt, generous hearts, cotton floss and lavender. The lovely little teddy bear, a quilt you can create or a card. Cherubs, a collage of cherubs using two different scarves and multiplying the images. A montage, burning hearts, acrylic, also can be used all year round. My favorite cherub. The wonderful cherub pin and how you can set that up, a close-up. Another chair, a favorite of mine, a paper mache can be used year round by changing the ribbon. A very simple handmade heart, Courage Your Heart by C.S. Lewis. And that is my end. Yeah. <laughs> Valentine to all of you. I hope you have enjoyed looking at these images and have been encouraged to try to make some of the crafts and recycling some of your boxes. Especially your candy boxes. You know, you save those boxes and you want to do something with them and you never know. And you gave me all many ideas. Oh, and that now was you lovely. Know. Now <laughs> Um, no, I know. I had one question for you. The balsa wood boxes, they were lovely. Where do you get them? Uh, Michael's uh, Joint Fabric, any of the hobby places, and watch for those coupons that you can get and saving. They really are very inexpensive. You can get them under $2. Oh, they were gorgeous with your stencils from nature. Oh, it was just lovely. Thank you. you. When I did the um, table art decor book, why I was going to Christina's all the time because she has so many lovely little scenes and vignettes that you want to just keep taking pictures of. 
Thank um, you. I'm getting, I'm getting thank you. Does anybody have any questions before we close up here? Um, I have two thank yous. Thank you for a lovely presentation. You have a beautiful collection and I'm inspired by some of your ideas. Thanks. And I was the only one who had a question. Oh, and I love hot lips. That was really funny. I like hot lips. Yeah. You know, Marilyn Monroe growing in, in Argentina, uh, you have these icons, you know, and then you come to this country and there are these pop artists and, and then you get married and you have a little bit extra money and you think, ah, I have to have that. And those right. look, I mean, they are just amazing. You really have to see them. <laughs> well, it was, it was absolutely lovely. What a way to start off on Valentine's Day. I mean, you know. I have, a, I have a question. Yes, Phoebe. Christina, where do you buy, or you probably harvest it in your backyard, but lavender, where can I pick up lavender? Oh, well, you know, some of us from the Garden Club, we grow them. I yeah. know that. <laughs> last year, uh, I made lavender bottles, and I had two amazing uh, friends who grow them, and I was able to get them. But, you know, there are different kinds of lavenders. The ones that I showed, uh, you can buy them at Watson's Farm. You can buy them at Trader Show during the season. If you want to bake with lavender, do not use that lavender. The culinary lavender is different. And then there's a place in West Concord where you can purchase that. Right. Uh, if you travel to France, Bring yeah. of lavender. Oh, I, I, I can actually underwear pick, or whatever. <laughs> uh, I can actually pick it in our daughter's backyard by the armfuls, but unfortunately, I'm not in California right now. <laughs> well, you know, Phoebe. Um, really, um, if you are interested, give me a call. Or send me an email because uh, sometimes I get these gifts boxes full of lavender and I have sold them at our boutiques for the garden. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Ashley, you remember that. So I many times have leftovers and I love to use them. And I mean, I have to tell you when you make those uh, shoe sachets with lavender and you place them in your shoes. Your shoes, yes, they look lovely. That's a wonderful thing, especially if these are inside your winter shoes to have that spring you know, one, uh, it's, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. And I just want to check, are there any more questions? No. Um, no, you have to look around for the, the lavender and things like that. Um, or get to know your friends who are growing it, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of growing of lavender in Lexington by friends. You know, they come in, in different uh, heights. So if you want to make a lavender bowl, you need to look for the one that has a very long stem. Uh, for the others, it doesn't matter. And then pick mm -hmm. them up. If you, I mean, you can buy lavender plant inexpensively at Home Depot and pots <laughs> have them. And that's what I did for because I needed to have enough for the workshop and and you know you you enjoy the scent uh and then you can produce all these things and the more you dead had them the more they will bloom so you can get three seasons of bloom from them you huh. see yeah you need a great big pot uh, baby right. and just grow a big pot of lavender <laughs> and sun <laughs> yes. yeah. unfortunately we don't have a lot of in our yard or you need to encourage your neighbor or somebody uh, <laughs> give me a call <laughs> give her a call she'll be, be generous and so forth yeah. uh, well i thank you it's a lovely thing to see on a cold wintry night as we yeah it's another delightful. This was lovely. delightful thank you very much remember recycle things don't throw things away Yes, I, I do remember. I had a friend when his wife died, he found 50 candy boxes in the attic. Oh my. Oh my. They call me. <laughs> oh. He told me he'd already tossed them. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. But we should save those candy boxes. They are lovely. And seeing the ones from Paris, oh. And the other thing I want to tell you, you know, with Fouchon and Maxim, now you can find sometimes these candies here 
very, you know, price not very high because they're discount stores like Home Goods. Yeah. But you have to start looking for them very early. So, you know, right when the Christmas items disappear and they start bringing Valentine, <laughs> you might find them. Yep. Don't wait. Just grab them. Yeah. yeah. But you got to go find the new home goods. It's moved out of Bedford. Um, well, you know which one it is that, that is replacing them. It is fabulous in Waltham, almost across. You know, when you go to that new shopping center where Market Basket is, there is very nice, really nice home goods and TJ Maxx or Marshall. Is it Marshall or TJ Maxx? But definitely the... Um, the home goods is good, and I think because of the high tech companies, there is some European influence on what they carry. Hmm. So you can find some interesting accessories and other things. Oh, interesting point. I haven't even checked out that shopping center for a long time. Well, I thank you, everybody. Um, stay warm. Uh, be careful on Friday. Um, and next next Wednesday at one, we will be having a program on gardening and uh, global warming. Very different from what you've seen tonight. So tonight you go home and practice crafts and decoupage and all these lovely things you saw. Thank you, Christina. It's lovely to have you on the show. It was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I, we did indeed. It was lovely. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, everyone, for coming.